I'm Merge Shane, pastor at Kiyoki Chapel, and we're viewing today from a slightly different angle, uh, considering uh, the time of year and the weather, I think it best to give you our worship from a different location. So today, uh, we're still continuing to recognize Black History Month, and I wanted to uh, give you some brief information. Uh, we want to recognize the life of Ida Bell Wells Barnett, who was a pioneering journalist, a anti-lynching activist, a crusader for justice for women and people of color. Um, and you can learn more from the United Methodist Communications or from our conference Eastern Pennsylvania United Methodist Conference. Uh, go to their websites and look at the history of another pioneering uh, United Methodist. And so we give thanks for her life. And each week I'll try to give you a different individual that we are honoring and recognizing. So let us begin our worship with our greeting and call to worship. The Lord is sovereign. Let the people tremble in awe. God is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and is high above all peoples. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship Yahweh upon the holy mountain. Let us pray. God of glory and mercy, before his death in shame, your son went to the mountaintop and you revealed his life in glory. Where prophets witnessed to him, you proclaimed him your son, but he returned to die among us. Help us face evil with courage, knowing that all things, even death, are subject to your transforming power. We ask through this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our children's sermon today you all know what these are. These are sunglasses. And what do they do? They help protect our eyes from the light. And so today, we're, our gospel message is all about bright lights. Uh, Jesus took, his, uh, took three of his disciples and went to the top of the mountain in our story today, and he was transformed. This is Transfiguration Sunday, and so we recognize that Jesus' transformation and he appeared to the disciples, Peter, James, and John, as a bright light. And so they needed to shield their eyes from seeing him because it was so bright. It was like looking at the sun. And so many times when we do that, we put our hands up so that we don't get all the light or that we use sunglasses in our day and age. And so... When they saw this bright light, they were very scared and terrified of what they were seeing. But Jesus reassured them of who he was, and God sent a cloud over so that the light wasn't quite as bright. And in that cloud, God's voice was heard, indicating, listen to him, my beloved son. And so... That's what we're going to focus on, that listening to Jesus. God was giving his disciples this special message. Jesus was God's son, and it's important to listen to him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on bright sunny days, remind us that your love surrounds us like the sunshine. And remind us to listen to Jesus for help, for guidance, for the assurance that God loves us too. 
Amen. As we go to our time of prayer today, we want to lift up those that uh, we're concerned about, uh, those in recovery, those that are uh, struggling with uh, illness and recovering from injury. We want to think about those that we uh, pray for that uh, are in harm's way. We always want to pray for those that are traveling um, and also those that are caring for others. And we hope you too are caring for others. And as you have uh, prayer concerns, please pass them on to us so that we can uh, provide in our prayers and thoughts for you. So let us pray. Jesus Christ, you lifted the veil between heaven and earth to show us your glory. In him we see love in its purest form. Help us to look for and recognize those moments in our lives when the space between you and us is thin and we are truly in the presence of the Holy One. In our daily living, let us reflect that glory and love to those around us. May we see you in what we imagine to be the unlikely places, not just on the mountaintop, but in our homes, in our schools, among our friends and at work, in our communities, and in our daily circumstances. Gracious God, how often our vision is limited, and we do not see your glory and love. We fail to see you in those who are poor, needy, or oppressed, and therefore we do not act on their behalf. Forgive us and open our eyes, O Lord. Teach us to see with renewed vision. Teach us to act with renewed love. Teach us to listen to your callings for us to be in connection with one another. O oh God, bless those that are in harm's way. Bless those traveling and those that are dealing with the storms of life. We pray for those that are sick and afflicted, those that are less fortunate, those that are homeless and hungry, those that are struggling. both mind and body, and spirit. We pray for all those that are working diligently to help us in the world. Give them strength and comfort. Guide them so that we all may prosper and grow in your love. We pray these and other prayers in your Son, Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We give thanks for all of you that have uh, supported this ministry. We ask for your continued support. We don't want to focus on uh, just paying bills, but we want to focus on mission. Uh, what the church can do in our community and around the world. And so we give thanks for those gifts. So let us pray. Let us, O oh Lord, offer our lives, our hearts, and our gifts to serve you. As our vision is renewed, so renew our acts of kindness, our dedication to show Jesus to the world, and our desire to make our spheres of influence better reflect the glory of God. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is Mark 9, 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there was a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for the gift of your holy scriptures, whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with a ready willingness to hear its truth, heed its calling, and enact its lessons. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> our text today is taken from Psalm, and I'll read chapter 50, verses 1 through 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its settings. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. 
Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declared his righteousness, for God himself is judge. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. I recently had a doctor's appointment to have my eyes tested and checked. And I recognized how important light is. Sometimes the light is too bright and I had to put on sunglasses. Sometimes it was challenging trying to see because of the light. And so it is important in terms of our seeing as we look and examine this scripture as it talks about light, as it talks about the story of Jesus with Peter, John, and James, and how Jesus was transformed, this transfiguration. Now some texts talk about his face being bright like the sun. And Mark's version, it talks about Jesus being, his clothing being bright. Something that's beyond just mere bleach. Something that's beyond simply being bright. The other versions talk about uh, his face, but I want you to think about Jesus, not so much just his face, and not just his clothing, but his body being radiant like sunlight through the clothing. So bright that you would need sunglasses, that you would shine or move away from it because it was just so bright. But how important is that bright light? How it gets our attention as we live. Oh yeah, we're all looking at brightness. Our background today is not so bright, although the snow makes it look much brighter than the sky looks. Jesus being able to be so bright symbolizes righteousness and heavenly existence. Interesting. How we look and examine light in our lives. How we look at that brightness. What happens to our eyes and our vision as we look at bright lights. As we have bright lights here to help shine on me for filming, I think about when I look into that light, how it blocks my vision, how I can't really see well because of that light. And what does that tell me? Well, sometimes people see multiple colors as they look at light. Sometimes they see no color. And so I always think about when people tell me about their stories relative to color and blindness. How well can they really see? We've got to be very careful about how we talk about our blindness. How we talk about, in particular, being colorblind. That is, the absence of being able to see. You can't see very well that way. When people tell me that they're colorblind, that I wonder, do they really see me? Are they just saying words? You see, that color blindness means that 
they are rendering me invisible. And that is not acceptable. We need to be able to see as much as we possibly can so that we can truly see the light of God in all things, in our relationships with one another. You see, that's what the psalm is all about. The psalm is about God appears like the sun, bright, shedding light on our attitudes and our behaviors. In particular, he was talking about the attitudes and behaviors of the people that he had made covenant with in that psalm. And so we have to look at what that truly means in shedding the light on our attitudes and behaviors as we examine our lives and how we're living with one another. Are we living right relationships with each other? Are we living right relationships with God? Are we giving the best that we possibly can? Are we only half-stepping as I talk about it? Are we truly giving ourselves and showing God our best efforts in our relationships with God and our relationships with each other? God is the divine judge as it talks about in this psalm. So God is the judge. How often do we judge each other? Where we attempt to play God and we want to judge those around us and all that is about us? Or are we truly letting God be God? What are we doing? What are we looking at? As God looks at you, are you taking careful inventory of your life? Are you trying to be right and examine the wrongs in your life and to make amends for that? Are you truly allowing the light of God to shine through you in all that you do and all that you say, looking at your attitudes and your behaviors. The message in both scriptures is about listening, listening to what Jesus says and does and listening to God in God's Word. Are you truly doing that as you examine your life? Are you just trying to see and not being able to see well? Are you truly listening to what God has to offer? As we examine numerous parts of our lives, as we deal with different issues, are we truly looking at what God wants us to do? Are we seeing the picture clearly? I have a bag in the other room that has on it, see all the people. I even have notepads and so forth that say the same thing. See all the people. Are we truly seeing all the people? Are we being blind to certain folks, certain things? Are we truly about showing God's love to all people? Are we reserving it to a certain group? How are you looking at life? Are you only looking at it through your eyes? or through the eyes of all? Are you carefully listening 
to all those around you so that you can hear God speaking and be able to act accordingly. What are you able to see? Are you able to see God's love? Let us pray. Holy God, upon the mountain you revealed our Messiah, who by his death and resurrection would fulfill both the law and the prophets. By his transfiguration, enlighten our path, that we may dare to suffer with him in the service of humanity, and so share in the everlasting glory of him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Now go forth. Show the love of God in all that you do and everywhere you go. Give thanks. See God's people. Listen carefully to God's instruction. Go forth in peace. Stay safe.